Hi, this is Miss Diorama. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video I'll be showing you some storage ideas for these hobby paints, the type you can get from the Army Painter and some other popular brands. Ever since I started making dioramas a few years ago, I've accumulated a lot of these hobby paints and this is where they all end up when I'm not using them. This is not a great solution. There has to be a better way to store these paints. A short while ago, I got this paint stand online. While it serves its purpose, I'm not 100% happy with it for a number of reasons. It's a bit unstable and wobbly. I need both hands to pick it up when it's fully loaded with paints. It doesn't actually fit the whole set of paints that I have. And you probably can't see it, but it is quite the dust collector. But despite those negatives, I don't mind that too much in relation to the practicality and functionality that this stand offers to me in general. But nonetheless, I wanted something better. So I decided I would attempt to make one myself. So I decided to search online for some inspiration. Then I came across this paint holder on Thingiverse. It's quite an amazing design by a talented designer by the name of Print Paint Play. This is an STL file for 3D printers, so if you don't own or have access to a 3D printer, this one is probably out of the question. Luckily, I do own a 3D printer and I decided to make this paint organizer. When this paint organizer is finished printing, it will hold a whopping 90 of these hobby paints. I'll provide a link to the file in the video description in case you're interested in printing this one for yourself. From memory, overall I think it took about 54 hours to print, but I was really pleased with the result. When the print was finished, I took the organizer off the build plate, removed the supports, then did some sanding to make the surface nice and smooth. And this is how it looks with paints in it. This paint organizer is great because it holds 90 paint bottles, but I have more than 90. Also, although you can see the color of the paint through the clear part at the top of each bottle, it's not easy to see the labels and therefore also not easy to find the color you want. Nonetheless, overall, I'm sure I will be using this paint organizer for years to come. So because I have more than 90 of these paints, I decided I would design my own organizer that would hold the rest of them. I decided to use my laser and 3mm MDF for this project. In Australia, a 2400 by 1200 sheet of 3mm MDF is around $15, which I think is reasonable for a project like this one. I required my design to allow me to not only be able to see the paints and easily identify the colors, but also to be able to organize them into their different categories. For example, the Army Painter has regular paints, speed paints, airbrush paints, effects paints, washes, and now the Fanatics range. The Army Painter uses a hexagon shape for each colour on their colour charts as well as on their bottle labels and so for that reason I've incorporated hexagons into my design. During the design process for this paint organiser there were some parts that I had second and even third attempts at getting just right, such as the main side parts that hold the carousel. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you may be wondering what I do about the smoke and fumes that result from the cutting process. Well, there is a powerful ceiling mounted extraction fan in the room that vents the smoke and fumes to the outside. I also have a ceiling fan that I've put in reverse mode and rather than just wafting up slowly, the smoke and fumes are actually pulled up to the ceiling by the fan when it's in reverse, where the extraction fan is then easily able to get rid of the smoke and fumes. In case you're wondering how I came up with the idea for this paint organiser, I found some free files online for a laser cut paint carousel. I'll provide the link to those files in the video description. I only kept a few features of that design, such as the six paint trays and the carousel or ferris wheel style of the design. I also borrowed an idea for a drawer at the base of my paint holder, as well as the concept for the centre axis that the carousel will spin around from an amazing designer who I've also mentioned in the description. The parts currently being cut are for the paint trays. I repeated this same cut six times in order to get six trays in total. In case you are interested, this laser I'm using now is the Auto Laser Master 3 and it's currently running a 20 watt laser module. This machine is actually the fourth Auto laser that I've used and is definitely the most powerful and most efficient so far. And for those who are interested, the settings I'm using to engrave are one pass at a speed of seven and a half and a power of 12. And the settings I'm using to cut are two passes at a speed of five and a power of 45. I also use the air assist, which significantly decreases the amount of charring and smoke produced from the cutting process. If you are thinking of investing in a laser cutter, Orta really do have some great options to choose from. I have provided a link in the description to where you can check out their products for yourself. If there was an improvement that I think Auto could make, it would be for them to provide a better solution to prevent the air pump hose from being dragged across the cutting surface. I don't think securing it with cable ties would be the answer because the cable ties would potentially cut off the airflow. What do you think? Or has anyone got a solution to this? Let me know in the comments. For now, I'm going to leave you to watch the rest of the parts getting cut out. If you don't want to watch that happening, you can skip to timestamp 1220 the next chapter, where you can see me assemble the paint stand.
And finally, here are all of the parts that I've cut for my paint organiser. I'm going to use PVA wood glue. This product from Sellys is an interior wood glue, but you could use any PVA wood glue, it wouldn't really matter. I went ahead and applied glue using a regular old paintbrush. Then I began to assemble the paint trays, starting with the sides first. With the sides now attached, I followed these with one of the end pieces. Before I could attach the other end piece, I first put in the piece that will separate the paint bottles. And this was followed with the piece for the other end. And now for some pieces that will cover the notched ends of the paint trays. And that completed one tray. Then I repeated the same process five more times. Then it was time to assemble the main structure of the paint organiser, starting with the sides and the base.
Once the sides were in place, I then attached the packing piece. This was followed with the top and last piece of the base. I inserted some pieces of scrap into what will be the drawer runners to stop them from sagging while the glue dries. Then I used clamps to make sure that the base joints were kept tightly together while the glue was drying. Then it was time to attach the two outside pieces. Their purpose was to reinforce the strength of the paint holder, as it will be supporting quite a bit of weight. That completed the base, and I could move on to the carousel. First, I assemble the centre axle. Then I assembled the outer carousel wheels. I pushed one end of the centre axle through one of the outer wheels. The purpose of these hexagonal rings is to stop the main wheels from sliding further toward the middle of the axle. That done, it was time to assemble the drawer. You may be wondering what I did with the drawer runners. I had glued them on, but actually had to cut and sand them off again because they wouldn't slide easily in the spaces that I designed for them. But I found that this didn't seem to affect the functioning of the drawer. Once the drawer was complete, the paint trays could now be installed. To do this, I placed a short piece of round dowel, followed by a hexagonal shaped spacer through the holes at each end of the paint trays. 
To attach the paint trays to the carousel, the dowels were inserted into their respective openings on the large outer wheels. I didn't glue these in order to allow the paint trays to swing freely. However, you could use glue to attach them if you wanted to. But keep in mind, if using glue, only one end of each dowel should be glued in place to allow the trays to swing freely when the carousel turns. Now with the paint trays installed, it was time for some finishing details, including one of these dials on each side of the carousel. The drawer needed some kind of a handle, which I made by gluing together four of the hexagonal shaped offcuts. I made two handles in total, and using a ruler and two spacers as a guide, I glued one of these 50mm from one edge of the drawer front, and the other 50mm from the other edge of the drawer front. I also made this bolt in the same way using offcuts. Its purpose is to secure the carousel in position to prevent movement while using the paints. It stores away nicely in the drawer. Finally, it was time to load 90 of my paints into the paint organiser. You can see how this design allows you to easily and clearly observe the labels. You may also notice that some of these hexagonal windows are higher than others. This is in consideration of the difference in labels between the various ranges of the Army Painter paints. The Army Painter has their paint names in a slightly different position on the labels from each of their different ranges. For example, it is higher on the Speed Paint 2.0 range than it is on the Air Paint and the War Paint ranges. I am yet to find out if it will be different again on the Fanatics range that's coming out soon. To be honest, the difference in position of the paint names between the ranges is only so very slight, but I thought it was a detail worth considering in my design. Another feature I thought was worth considering in my design was the drawer. It's large enough to store brushes up to 30cm in length, as well as other small tools such as a hobby knife, wire cutters, rulers, scissors and more. I really like how accessible these brushes are when I need them. Another feature of this design is that paints can easily be accessed either from the front or from the back of the paint organiser. The carousel can be turned using both hands or just one hand.
And now with this design available to me, I can always make another one if and when I extend my paint range even further. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you haven't already, please consider supporting my channel by subscribing. And make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And thank you to all of my subscribers, I really appreciate your support. And as always, thanks for watching. Stick around for just a bit longer and check out these shots I took. Thank mm -hmm. you.